Hey, it's Danish. In this tutorial, we will learn how thread stack works in assembly. In assembly, the push instruction is used to push 4 bytes of data on top of the memory stack. And the pop instruction is used to pop 4 bytes of data from top of the memory stack. And these 4 bytes are stored within a CPU register. When we have some data in a CPU register like EX, which we want to keep for later use. But we also need to perform other operations using the same register. We use the push instruction to store its data on the stack. Let's look at an example. We will write inline assembly for this example. I will show you how to write a loop in assembly where the code will iterate 10 times. Let's run the program and attach our debugger. Imagine if we have some important data in the EX register. Let's say if we have the number 50 in EX and we don't want to lose it, then we use the push instruction to push the 4 bytes of data on the stack. Now we can use the EX register for other operations if you want to. And once when we are done, we can pop the 4 bytes of data from the stack. And since we wrote EX here, the data will be stored back in EX register. We need to use a CPU register for the loop index. We will use EX here. And let's initialize it to 0. Then we define a label so we can jump back here using the jump instruction to repeat the code. Now we can write code here if you want to, but I will keep this empty. The increment instruction will increment the value of the register by 1. We use the compare instruction to check if the value of the EX register is lower than 10 or not. If the index is lower than 10, the control will jump to repeat the code label and repeat the code again. This code will be executed 10 times. Once the value of EX becomes 10, then the control will go to the next instruction. The pop instruction will pop 4 bytes of data from top of the stack and store the value in EX. The old value of the register EX, which is 50, has been restored. There are two CPU registers which are used to manipulate the memory stack of a thread, ASP and EBP. Both of these registers are 4 bytes in size, just like the general purpose registers, except the purpose of these two registers is to manipulate the memory stack. The ESP register is called the stack pointer. The ESP register will always point to the top of the stack by holding its memory address. Whenever the push instruction is executed, it will allocate 4 bytes of space on top of the stack by subtracting 4 bytes from the value of ESP and the value of the register will be copied to the allocated space. The POM instruction will do the opposite. It will first copy the 4 bytes of data from top of the stack to the register. It will deallocate the 4 bytes by simply adding 4 to the value of ESP. Whether we push or pop data on top of the stack, the ESP register will always point to it. On the other hand, the EBP register is called the base pointer. To understand how the EBP register is used in assembly, let's look at an example. Since sum is a global function, its calling convention by default is CDECL. We can also write it like this. This will force the compiler to set the calling convention to CDECL for the sum function. If we put the sum function in a class and make it static like this, the calling convention of the static function will be CDECL, just like the global function. Let's see how we can call the sum function in assembly. We first push the two function parameters A and B on the stack in right to left order, and then we call the function. When the function returns, the two parameters are cleared from the stack using the add instruction, and finally, the return value is stored in EX register. We then move the return value into the C++ variable and print it. We have some C++ code for calculating the average of three numbers. We will write the code in assembly. In just a moment, all of it will make sense. Let's compile the program and attach our debugger. We first push the three parameters on the stack for get average function. Depending on the calling convention, function parameters are pushed in right to left order. And then we use the call instruction to call the function. The call instruction will first push the 4 byte address of the next instruction that comes after the call and then call the function. The reason why it pushed the address of the next instruction on the stack is because when the program is done executing this function, then the program will return the control back and the address on the stack is used for jumping back there. These few lines of code at the top of the function is called the prolog. This is where we create the space for local variables. And if you look at the bottom of the function, these few lines of code is called the epilog. Here we deallocate the space we created for local variables and return. So we first push the value of EBP register on the stack and then we move the value of ESP into EBP. Now ESP and EBP contain the same address, which means both of them are pointing to the top of the stack. We can right click here and change the value representation to decimal or hexadecimal if you want. Nonetheless, both of these registers will have the same value. Here's the interesting part. We create the space for two local variables by subtracting it from the address within the ESP. The size of each local variable will be 4 bytes because the data type is integer. If you look at the stack, the value of ESP got updated. So ESP is still pointing to the top of the stack as always. But if you look at EBP, EBP still contains the old address. This means that EBP is still pointing to the old location on the stack. This is exactly what we need. 
Now we can use the EP register to access and modify data on the stack. We need to calculate the sum of the three function parameters A, B, and C. If you look at our stack, this is how we can use the EP register to access and modify the data on the stack. For function parameters, we simply use the positive sign to access them because they come before the location the EP register is pointing to. And for the data that comes after the location the EP register is pointing to, we have to use the negative sign for them. The square brackets instructs the compiler that we are dealing with a memory address. The move instruction will move the value of the function parameter A from memory into the ECX register. Now ECX contains the value 10 and then the end instruction will add the value of two operands together and store the result in the left operand. We are adding the value of the function parameter B with the value in ECX. ECX will now contain the value 15 because we added the value 5 to it from the function parameter B. And then we add the value of the function parameter C to the value in ECX. Now ECX will contain the value 30. And here the value from ECX will be moved into the sum local variable, which is on the stack. This code will perform the division for calculating the average. This instruction is called the bitwise exclusive R. It will set the value in EDX to zero if you write the name of the same register for both operands. We're doing this because the divide instruction will store the remainder in EDX. The dividend must be moved into EX before calling the divide instruction. So we move our sum into the EX register from the stack and we can move the divisor to a register of our choice. Let's move it to ECX register. Finally, we have the divide instruction and the name of the register which contains the divisor. When the divide instruction executes, the quotient is stored in the EX register and the remainder is stored in the EDX. If you look at the registers, EX now contains the average which is 10. Then the average is moved from EX into the average local variable on the stack. The return value is normally stored in EX. So we'll move the average into the EX register. This instruction will deallocate the space for local variables on the stack by simply adding the number A to the value of ESP. So basically, the sum instruction is used to allocate space on the stack and the add instruction is used to deallocate that space. We can also use the POM instruction instead of the add instruction, but the add instruction is faster because the POM instruction can only clear four bytes at a time. This instruction is actually not needed here. We can remove it and the code will work fine because in the next instruction, we are restoring the old value of ESP, which will clear the stack for us. The value of AP, which we pushed on the stack first, we must restore that as well. And the POM instruction will pop the four bytes of data from top of the stack and store them in EP. The return instruction will clear the four byte address from top of the stack and jump to it. We use the add instruction again to clear the function parameters on the stack. So EX still contains the average of the three numbers, which is 10. We can write more code here to print it if you want. Now let's check out std call calling convention for comparison. The calling convention of this function is cdecl by default. But if you want to change the calling convention to std call, then we have to write it like this. Let's write the sum function in assembly and let's see how we can call it. We first have to push the parameters in right to left order and then call the function. When you call the sum function, the return address will be pushed on the stack. Before the sum function returns, it will clear the function parameters on the stack. So we don't have to clear them here. And then we move the result into the sum variable and print it. This shows that when you have the SD call calling convention, you don't need to clear the stack arguments using add instruction because the callee function, which is the sum function in our case, it will clear the stack before returning. This is one of the main differences between SD call and CDECL calling conventions.